the strength of his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with big things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his child Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Spirit talks about God scattering the proud, God filling the hungry, and sending the rich away empty. He tells us to particularly feel uh, to be oppressed, those that were hungry, those that have been humbled. Because the song does refer to, to so much joy. But is joy coming to the oppressed and to the lowly and to the humble? Which makes sense in, in many ways. We talk so much in this Advent season about hope. We talk about the hope of the second coming of the first of Advent. And in this last week, we talk about that hope bringing us peace. But what we see here is hope bringing joy to an oppressed people. They live under oppression, but Mary can see through the promises that are being fulfilled in her very womb that that oppression will not last forever. So she is filled with great joy. That hope brings her so much joy. So much joy to a lowly and to a humble. It's something we can honestly see all throughout the Christmas story. God brings joy to the lowly and the humble. I mean, this is Mary who will give birth to her. She's not royalty. She's not, uh, you know, she's not a princess. She's not royalty. She's not the daughter of the high priest who went to the high priest of Jerusalem. She is a peasant girl engaged to a carpenter. You know, you could be more soft than a carpenter in this time period. I just feel like a certain amount of nothing special. Living in, in Galilee, these, these bad boys, you know, they say later about Jesus, how do you think they're going to ask? She's, some, she's no one special. She's just someone normal, willing to do what God says. And when Jesus is born, and, and he's right in the manger, not some soft bed. And who are his only visitors? Who are his visitors that come to worship them that night at his birth? The shepherds coming in from the field. <laughs> Normal laborers. Christmas stories is filled with humble people. We see this joy being brought to lowly and humble, not just in the Christmas story, but also in all of Jesus' ministry. I mean, you look at this, he's, who are his followers and disciples? They're not. Priests and scholars, they're fishermen, and a former tax collector. And he's teaching them things like the Beatitudes, where he tells them, Blessed are the meek and the poor and the hungry. When the rich young ruler comes to Jesus, he goes away and gets it, because Jesus tells him to sell everything that he owns. And then, of course, his ministry is not ended by any great revolt over the Roman Empire and creating a new kingdom, but the pinnacle of his ministry is death on the cross. 
You see so much joy in the story. And then you see the ministry. So much joy in the lot of these holy people. That's why honestly sometimes we need to be bad and be difficult for us in our society. Because no matter how we think of ourselves, and I know that by our society standards, we might not be the rich, but it falls of going away from the earth. But by so many standards, just the fact that we are blessed enough to be living in this society, as our role as Americans, we are the rich. You know, a, a little while ago, I was watching this YouTube video where they were comparing uh, McDonald's food in, in the United States of America. And it was just a sort of entertaining video you could see how it would get from different places. It was sort of talking about the Empire of the Great Friend, but the interest of making different and how the price is different. You know, they got the price part, and once you convert the movies to dollars, you know, when they were paying for their McDonald's in, in India, it was so much cheaper than what we pay. You know, some of you people know, were like five dollars, but the Indian folks won't give me a thousand say, you have to realize here in India, he said, the average person makes two dollars a day. So most people are buying this five dollar uh, McDonald's meal. He said, so even though this is so much cheaper in the US, this is so really expensive for India. He said, five dollars will feed most people's family for a week. McDonald's, you know, which is sort of, you know, cheap food here. He said it was only for people that had their money to eat them. And, you know, sort of helped put things in perspective. You might not be, you know, screwing things up and jumping into this whole ball of four golden coins. In the grand scheme of things, as our position here, we are the rich. And it can be difficult for us, maybe sometimes in that interview, just talking about uh, turning things over, it reminds us that in so many ways, God brings joy to the oppressed, the poor.